coverage you can count on. This is News 10 Nightwatch. Good evening and thanks for joining us. We begin tonight with developing national news. Big storms with big hail rolling toward the metro. I'll have the latest coming up. Here in Pleasant Hill, crews are still working to clean up the Oakwood Cemetery. Loved ones concerned about their loved ones' headstones. More on that coming up. And the Biden administration is taking steps to reclassify marijuana as a less dangerous drug. What this means for users across the nation. You're watching Local 5 News. We are Iowa. Well, here's a live look for you tonight from West Des Moines. Stormy weather making its way to central Iowa. As you can see, those clouds there look a little bit active. We're watching them closely. Scammers trying to cash in on your misery after storm damage like this. Protect your information and avoid getting scammed when disaster strikes. For the people that it does bother, I think it'll be good for them. And a Kansas town divided by trains, making it harder to get where they need to go. But the city's stepping in with a solution to connect the town. What they hope to see from a new project. This is a Storm Team 12 weather alert. All right, welcome into 12 News at 9. No surprise, we start with a look at radar right now. We continue to track this system, slowly trying to push out of our viewing area, but we have seen it all. We've seen a lot of hail, wind, some tornado warnings then we possibly do it again tomorrow. So you have been sending us a lot of pictures like this one. This is uh, what looks like a pretty impressive wall cloud. Hard to tell in a still photo here whether it's rotating, but this you know, the last few days of it's just been very tough. And knowing that you have families that are hurting right now. A shocking and heartbreaking 24 hours in Charlotte. Law enforcement, neighbors, the community, even us as well. We are all coming to grips with the shooting tragedy that has taken the lives of four officers. Thanks for joining us for the News at Four. I'm Jane Monreal. And I'm Nick Serdivan. This story has a lot of details to digest it, and we understand it's a lot to take in. Our team has been working hard to cover this story from every angle to give you a complete picture. First, we want to give you the details on exactly what happened and the latest on this investigation. This is breaking news from Channel 7 Eyewitness News. What a dramatic night tonight on the campus of Columbia University. Hundreds of New York cops mobilized to remove protesters and outside agitators who vandalized and barricaded themselves in a campus building. Police making nearly 50 arrests tonight. Those cops waiting until Columbia gave them the okay to move in and clear the privately owned building. Once they got that, they wasted no time. Cops also making arrests tonight at City College. We've got several reports on all of this. We're going to begin with Eyewitness News reporter Jim Dolan, who has been at Columbia all night. Jim? This is CBS 2 News at 11. And breaking news right now at 11, an imposing NYPD vehicle pulls up to Columbia University as officers arrest demonstrators who had taken over Hamilton Hall and had been refusing to leave. This is the culmination of two weeks of protest on campus, all coming to a head tonight. Good evening, I'm Maurice Dubois. Tonight, police say they have made nearly 50 arrests, dismantled three encampments on campus, and this comes after hundreds of officers in protective gear and with zip ties entered the campus as a request of the administration. Pro-Palestine demonstrations continue to intensify this evening at universities across the nation, including right here in the borderland. Coming up, we take a look at the tension rising on campuses from coast to coast. I took a look over to our to the back of our store and there, there's a car just sitting there. Some terrifying moments for shoppers in Las Cruces after a car careens into a crowded store coming up the latest on that crash that left one person dead and several others injured. And another day with warmer temperatures and lighter winds, but what could bring stronger winds back to the borderland and when? KFOX 14's and 9 starts right now. Live from the KFOX 14 studios, this is KFOX 14 News at 9. Well, thanks for joining us this evening. I'm Liz DeWicky. And I'm Robert Olguin. A suspended pro-Palestine group gathering on UT's campus. 
So if they want to continue to repress us, we will get up, stand back, and fight back. Tonight, how the university is handling this demonstration. Ending April on a quiet note, but starting May with more severe thunderstorm threat. I'll track what to expect hour by hour. And financial data in the cloud, vulnerable to cyber attacks. We're reaching a point where we could have a catastrophic problem. What a breach could mean for our banking system. CBS Austin News at 10 starts now. Today marked day four of protests at the University of Texas in Austin, where students in support of Palestine are demanding the university divest from manufacturers supplying weapons in the Israel-Hamas war. CBS Austin's Abigail Velez has been at each of these demonstrations and joins us live tonight. Abigail, today a much quieter protest, but these protests say they're not done. This is 6 News at 10. It's okay to be brave if you have to say something because someone has hurt you. Not just in April. Tonight on 6 News, she's using her own life story to help shape others. Meet the local author who's making changes in children's lives with her book. And thousands of dollars paid and hardly anything to show for it except some dirt and a broken promise. We're here to help get justice for these homeowners in a new six fix. Plus, while Rhoda is disappearing before their eyes, nobody is answering the call to help these neighbors be safe. Will anyone step up? It's all right here, right now on 6 News at 10. Good evening and thanks for staying up late with us. I'm Bailey Bates. Chris has the night off. Leading the way with important local coverage. WISN 12 News at 10 starts right now. A four-year-old girl killed in a hit and run crossing the street with her mom. She's an angel. Breaking at 10, the arrest made by police and the outrage tonight. It's garbage. It's A woman found dead in the trunk of a car. She had told several members that she's on the back. What her father is telling 12 News about her troubled past with her husband, who's now in custody. You don't have a driver's license at all? No. A flaw in the law keeping unlicensed drivers behind the wheel. One sheriff fed up his plan to crack down on repeat offenders. What is the thought behind that harsher penalty? It is a busy night. We're going to start on weather watch rain moving into southeast Wisconsin right now. And Mark leads us off here at 10 with how long that rain will last, Mark. The good thing is this is one of those rains that comes in the middle of the night. Most people are going to be sleeping. Protesters on the move tonight. Demonstrations at the Salt Lake County Jail after last night's campus arrests at the University of Utah. It was a nice day today, but changes are on the way as the cold front moves through the state arriving tonight. What to expect in the overnight hours and for your morning commute. The U.S. government plans to reclassify marijuana as a lower risk drug. What this means for distributors here in Utah. How Weber County crews are tackling debris in the Weber River to help prevent flooding. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13 News at 9 starts right now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelly Chapman. Tonight, we are tracking a second night of pro-Palestinian protests in Utah. And so far, it's played out much differently from last night. Getting answers. This is CBS 13 News. Always streaming on CBS News Sacramento. They've breached Hamilton Hall officially. Dozens of protesters cuffed as officers move in on the Columbia University campus. New York City officers entering the campus earlier tonight, finally clearing the buildings just within the last hour. We're showing you some footage here from Hamilton Hall, where overnight protesters moved in, locking themselves inside that building. Columbia was the site of the first campus protest over the Israel-Hamas war. Yeah, students took to the grounds about two weeks ago, and now we've seen it spread across the U.S., right, including here at home. Pro-Palestine protesters setting up camp at Sac State yesterday. They had a midnight deadline tonight to leave. They've now been given an extension. You're is KCAL News, Los Angeles. Right now on KCAL News on CBS Los Angeles, protests at UCLA reaching a boiling point. Tonight, the university demands the tent city shut down and warns people will be punished if they don't leave. Good evening, I'm Pat Harvey. And I'm Chauncey Glover. Tonight, leaders at UCLA say they've had enough and they have declared the encampment unlawful. 
Well, they want everyone to leave or face arrest and maybe even expulsion. KKL News political reporter Tom Waite is on campus tonight. Now at 11, chasing down suspects in retail heists on the peninsula. The bust that put dozens of people in cuffs. Plus, next time you go to a restaurant, surcharges could be cut out, but you may be paying more in the end. And things get hot over a Bay Area recall effort. I don't care about the money. I care about the justice. Plus, they are one of the biggest attractions at Fisherman's Wharf. Right now is the best time to see and hear them. What's causing a sea lion invasion? From KPIX, this is the Late News with Sarah Donchi on CBS News Bay Area. And good evening, I'm Juliet Goodrich, in for Sarah tonight. You know, when you go out to eat, tipping can be a very touchy subject. And we've seen some San Francisco restaurants do away with tipping entirely. 